So, hello everyone, and thank you for attending. Uh, my name is Ayala Razi, and I'm a product marketing manager for cloud security services here at Radware. Uh, together with me is uh, Neer Ilani, who's a vice president for product management of cloud services uh, at Radware. Hi, Neer. And uh, today we're going to be talking about an innovative new approach uh, to DDoS protection, and that is the hybrid uh, always-on uh, DDoS protection deployment model. Uh, so before we dive into uh, the what, why, and how of it, uh, just a few notes on housekeeping. Um, so if you'll note on your uh, screen, you have a Q&A box. Uh, if you're watching this live, uh, please type in your questions as we go along if you have any, and we'll be happy to take uh, some Q&A questions uh, at the end. Uh, if not, uh, feel free to reach out. If you're watching this on demand, uh, feel free to reach out to us uh, once you're done, and again, uh, here at Radware, we'll be happy to uh, answer any questions uh, that you have. Uh, so uh, let's begin. So the objectives for uh, today's session are as follows. Uh, so first of all, we're going to start with a review of the DDoS threat landscape, and we're going to talk about a few of the key and emerging attack vectors that are impacting organizations today. Uh, then, uh, based on that, we're going to go into discussion of the limits of existing defenses, and we'll introduce a new uh, deployment model that uh, covers all of those limits, and that is the hybrid always-on uh, DDoS protection model. After that, uh, we'll go into Radware's capabilities in this domain, and we're going to talk about how Radware's uh, leadership and technology uh, provides customers with the industry's uh, most comprehensive uh, and leading uh, DDoS protection, and we're going to talk about exactly how our leadership in both technology and cloud services uh, plays into that. So uh, before we, again, do uh, a deep dive into each of those domains, uh, let me just give you in a high level, uh, in a nutshell, you know, what we're going to be talking about. Uh, so, again, as we mentioned, we're going to be talking about uh, a new type of DDoS protection deployment option. That is the hybrid always-on protection model, uh, which combines, as the name implies, an always-on uh, cloud scrubbing service. So that's a, a cloud service, uh, which is always-on, together with a hardware-based uh, mitigation appliance. Uh, that is a Radware Defense Pro uh, mitigation appliance. Now, the reason we are uh, adding this option to begin with is the growing need in the market for DDoS protection that combines uh, uninterrupted protection both against high-scale volumetric DDoS attacks while concurrently also providing protection against application layer uh, and SSL attacks, uh, which may or may not be uh, volumetric. Uh, and that's why you need a combination of both the always-on cloud service uh, together with the uh, hardware mitigation appliance. Now, in terms of customer benefits, uh, so again, you get the best of both worlds here with a combination of multi-layered uh, defenses, which offer constant protection against both volumetric and application layer attacks. And what Radware uh, brings to the table and where Radware is really distinct is that we provide a single vendor solution with a unified technology stack uh, with a worldwide network, uh, high-scale capacity to absorb attacks, centralized management, and, of course, a dedicated service uh, providing a fully managed security service. So let's look next at the reality of uh, DDoS attacks and how emerging uh, technologies are impacting the security of organizations. So it used to be in the past that DDoS attacks were either very large or uh, very complex, but usually not both. So that was kind of traditionally. However, in the past couple of years, uh, with the uh, emergence of large-scale IoT botnets, uh, as well as emerging technologies, uh, we're really seeing this is no longer the case. And indeed, you have customers nowadays facing very complex attacks, which are both sophisticated 
and large scale at the same time. And this has to do, uh, or rather you see it, specifically in conjunction with three main attack vectors. Uh, so the first one that you know, is really emerging is the whole issue of application layer uh, DDoS attacks. So even though we still see a lot of volumetric layer, that is layer three and four um, network layer attacks, uh, more and more as services and applications are shifting to, uh, to web services, um, attacks are shifting as well and targeting the application layer uh, more and more. So that creates a challenge from a DDoS protection perspective uh, because a lot of traditional defenses don't know how to handle it. Uh, secondly, you have uh, the emergence of multi-vector uh, burst attacks. So these are, again, uh, very sophisticated types of attacks uh, which combine both hit and run um, DDoS attacks together with uh, shifting uh, multi-vector attacks, uh, which again are aimed at uh, fooling traditional defenses uh, and, shift, and shifting their uh, shape before defenses have time to, um, to adapt. And finally, we have the whole, the whole issue of SSL uh, DDoS floods, uh, which again are taking uh, trust encryption, which ironically is supposed to uh, help uh, application security and really using it as a weapon against organizations. And we're going to talk in, in, in a slide or two exactly how that happens. Uh, just, to, uh, just to illustrate uh, with just a few key figures, uh, if you look at your screen, uh, you'll see a few key figures from uh, Radware's own um, industry report, uh, our ERP report. Uh, so you can see that in 2018, we saw a 20% increase um, in uh, HTTPS floods. Uh, that's what you'll see on the top left of your screen. And we also saw a 15% uh, increase year over year uh, in burst attacks. Uh, now, shifting your attention to uh, the right side of the screen, uh, the large figure, um, one of the key findings of our uh, latest report was the shift of DDoS attacks to the application layer. Uh, and indeed, 64% of respondents in our, in our industry survey uh, reported being hit by an application layer uh, DDoS attack. And indeed, this was the number one um, attack vector uh, in terms of scale of all types of attacks. Uh, so again, we see consistently uh, the shift more and more to the more complex uh, attack vectors and to the application layer. Uh, now, specifically, I'd like to talk about, to spend a few words and talk about the issue of SSL protection. And this is really something key that is impacting a lot of organizations that, that we hear about from a lot of our customers. Um, now, SSL encryption, um, or rather, as more and more services uh, move to become uh, encrypted, uh, this is, of course, a positive development in the sense that it contributes to uh, customer security and traffic security and so on. However, ironically, attackers are leveraging some of the characteristics of SSL encryption uh, in order to make it into a tool against uh, organizations. And the reason for that is that SSL is a very demanding protocol. Uh, and it requires uh, up to 15 times more server resources uh, than compared to an unencrypted uh, traffic request. Uh, so as a result, uh, attackers can launch very large and very devastating attacks which exhaust uh, host uh, server resources using only a very small number of requests. Uh, so this is, again, something that is impacting a lot of organizations. And indeed, we saw a 20% year-over-year increase in HTTP attacks. Um, going back to what we saw earlier about the overall increase in application layer attacks, uh, one of the findings of our global application and network security report is that 50% of application layer attacks in 2018 uh, were already encrypted. Uh, so this is just to give you a, an idea of the overall scale and importance of uh, this problem. Uh, so really to talk about how to uh, protect against uh, this type, these types of emerging threats, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Nir, our VP of uh, Product Management. Uh, so Nir, uh, to you, so how do we protect against uh, these types of emerging threats?
Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Eyal. Uh, Niri Lani here, I'm VP Product for Cloud Services at Radware. And um, I'd like to talk right now, how can we effectively uh, mitigate these uh, new uh, cyber threats? We've seen that they're not only uh, theoretical, they are uh, very relevant and uh, they're probably here to, here to stay. So, so when we take a look at this emerging threat, the next relevant question is, what should the DDoS mitigation solution include in order to effectively combat them? All right, so let me talk about a couple of things. Number one, the solution must be able to inspect traffic in both directions, both inbound and outbound. If you take a look at typical cloud-based DDoS protection solutions, they have uh, basically visibility on, only into the ingress traffic. That is because technically the clean traffic is sent to the origin over a GRE tunnel or cross-connect, and the origin basically responds directly to the client. That means that the response traffic doesn't go through the scrubbing center or the DDoS solution, and there is totally no visibility for that. However, if we examine, uh, for example, a large file attack without seeing the return the uh, large traffic, the solution won't be able to decide uh, that uh, these requests, although uh, they, they seem uh, legit, basically, they generate a huge payload on the way back. Okay, similarly, arc flood attacks that max out system resources require also looking uh, at both ways. Technically, there is simply no other way to detect them without looking at both uh, ingress and uh, egress uh, traffic. And last but not least, if uh, you probably heard about a scanning attack, uh, so these, uh, these kind of attacks uh, open uh, many, many connections and, uh, and uh, hence uh, they cause a lot of noise and a lot of uh, resources are consumed on the server and the network infrastructure side, and they must be inspected both ways. Now, we have also talked about uh, SSL, so this brings me to the second thing. And on top of that, there is the increasing uses of SSL encrypted traffic. And why am I mentioning it? Uh, because of a couple of reasons. Number one, the attack potency increases as SSL masks the underlying attack payload. So without being able to decrypt the SSL traffic, attacks cannot be detected uh, at all. Number two, customers are also concerned with their SSL key exposure due to uh, regulatory compliance, as well as manageability reasons, because the more you expose your uh, certificates outside of your organization, outside of your data center, uh, you have less uh, central visibility and control over them. So, for example, uh, you know, simple task of uh, uh, renewing uh, once per year or once per a couple of years, the certificate becomes uh, may become a nightmare. And last but not least, there is the latency and privacy concerns uh, because uh, decrypting all traffic remotely basically requires more processing and may violate also the user privacy. Okay, so before moving on, let's just quickly take a look at the uh, uh, cloud DDoS protection uh, solution flavors that we provide at Radware, and we have basically so far three models. Number one is an appliance-based model, meaning that in the data center, we deploy an on-prem DDoS mitigation device. Uh, so as a result, it, it uh, features a low latency because it's uh, uh, right in uh, neighboring to the uh, protected asset. It provides a bi-directional visibility. It, it may provide application awareness. But the drawback is that there is limited capacity. Okay, if a, a volumetric attack starts and you don't have a, a big enough on-prem business mitigation device, it will simply not be able to uh, absorb the, uh, the attack volume. And on top of that, also there is the uh, management overhead because everybody knows that once you own a device, you're responsible for, for it, meaning that you need to patch it, you need to upgrade it, 
you need to uh, you need uh, to, uh, to to manage it. You need to uh, schedule the, the maintenance windows, etc. So that's number one. Number two, in the middle, we have a cloud service. Okay, so that is a high capacity solution because it uses an on-demand scrubbing centers. Uh, it cannot be available on demand or either always on. But the drawbacks here is that English traffic uh, 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 visibility is, is available only for the English traffic, just like we discussed. And there is also limited application awareness because the traffic is visible to the scrubbing center only upon being diverted, which takes place only when being attacked. So that's number two. And last but not least, the hybrid on-demand model, okay, uh, basically combines an on-prem inland device and an on-demand scrubbing center that can be utilized under attack. So this kind of uh, solution provides high capacity, low latency during freestyle because you don't go through the cloud uh, in peacetime. But the drawback, the main drawback, is that diversion, there is a diversion gap for volumetric uh, protection, and it takes time until traffic actually goes from the data center to the scrubbing center. And uh, not everyone, not all, uh, you know, customers from different industries can allow that. Okay, so now I'm glad to introduce you to a new cloud DDoS protection solution flavor, which is the hybrid always-on DDoS protection. Basically, this uh, new solution flavor combines the best of features uh, of all models that we just uh, reviewed, okay? It combines both continuous in-the-cloud inspection coupled with inline on prem DDoS mitigation device, which resides at the customer data center. And the resulting benefits are uh, quite strong. First of all, it's low latency. It provides bi-directional visibility because traffic goes in and out through the, uh, for both uh, solution components. It's high capacity because it leverages uh, cloud-based scrubbing centers. There is uninterrupted protection because it uses two, uh, two ends uh, for, uh, uh, for best mitigation. And also, last but not least, it allows customers to keep their SSA certificate in-house. Okay, so let's take a quick look at how it works. So basically on the left-hand side, we can see traffic coming from attackers. This traffic is continuously always routed through the uh, radar uh, scrubbing centers. All of that traffic is cleaned and cleaned by, by the hardware uh, scrubbing center. Okay, that means that under volumetric attack, there is no need to, uh, to detect something or to, or to, uh, to uh, divert the traffic. It's already diverted continuously to the scrubbing center. Next, the clean traffic and encrypted application uh, traffic is routed uh, uh, using the uh, Jerry tunnel or uh, cross connect. Uh, to the origin protected data center. And first of all, it goes through an on-prem inline defense for appliance, which also adds the second mitigation layer, okay? So basically, if we need to uh, now mitigate SSL encrypted attacks, the certificates are already available in the data center, and the second layer can do that. If we need to take, to apply a higher, uh, a higher granular policy uh, with more uh, uh, fine-grained uh, protections, we can do it uh, as well. So the combination of an always-on scrubbing center uh, mitigation coupled with an on-prem, highly tuned uh, defense for device make up this uh, model. If we take a look at the uh, DDoS uh, attack uh, coverage, uh, this solution flavor is able to mitigate a, a super wide spectrum of uh, cyber attacks. Okay, first of all, on the left hand side, network level attacks, so all kinds of floods, 
uh, whether it's UDP floods, SIN floods, TCP floods, ICMP, IGMP, as well as the TCP out of state, like ACT floods, reset floods, volumetric data attack, the burst, flood, the burst attack that they all mentioned, etc. Okay, so that's one thing. But on top of that, it also adds the application level and the SSL or TLS encrypted attacks. So attacks like SSL negotiation floods, HTTPS floods, DNS flood attacks, recursive DNS flood attacks, SIP floods, brute force attacks, and many others can be uh, uh, fully mitigated thanks to both of the DDoS mitigation layers. Okay, so here's a pretty nice and simple comparison of the four models. You can see the hybrid always on on the, on the far right. And this table basically displays the different uh, attack uh, life cycle stages. Okay, so if we, take, uh, if we talk about detection, the on-demand solution can detect only volumetric, only uh, attack, where the others, including the hybrid always on, can detect both volumetric and non-volumetric because, the, because there is always the, a, a visibility to the, uh, to the same traffic from, from the Internet. Moving on to the diversion time gap. Okay, so both the on-demand and the hybrid on-demand basically require a detection followed by some uh, alert and, uh, and a traffic diversion to the scrubbing center. So there is uh, some latency, some gap. In the hybrid all is on, it's already in the scrubbing center, so, so there is no diversion time gap. The next thing is SSL uh, key, key storage. And with the hybrid all is on, we also, uh, it also features an on-prem DDoS mitigation device. The certificates can be kept safely and centrally in the data center. Moving on to bi-directional traffic uh, visibility, because, uh, because the traffic always uh, goes through both the scrubbing center and the on-prem device, we have visibility to both uh, ingress and ingress air traffic. And last but not least, you know, uh, if we take a look at uh, what really matters from a customer's viewpoint, what is it that they want to, to protect? What are the challenges? So, uh, you know, on-demand, an on-demand uh, cloud data protection service or even an, an hybrid one, can be quite uh, suitable for many, many cases. However, if we're talking about mission-critical applications, if we're talking about large organizations, financial organizations that really care about their application, that really cannot afford downtime, and at the same time, they need to, uh, uh, to, to, to keep uh, uh, full manageability and not expose their certificates, the hybrid always on solution, thanks to all of the reasons that uh, we've talked about is just a perfect solution for these kind of customers. Okay, so if we summarize the new hybrid always on cloud EDIS protection uh, service that Adware offers, it's a multi-layer defense protecting from layer 4 up to layer 7, including SSL-based attacks. There is no diversion time gap because we always uh, inspect and, uh, and detect the traffic in the cloud. It provides bi-directional uh, detection, uh, allowing us to uh, uh, detect and mitigate advanced attacks like uh, like uh, arc floods, like uh, scanning, like large uh, file uh, download, including SSL flood protection, thanks to having the close visibility and proximity to the SSL certificates. It also reduces the SSL key exposure for the same reason. And finally, it provides application layer uh, protection, um, protecting from HTTPS and from uh, other uh, kind of attacks that uh, uh, on standard won't be able to be mitigated by a typical uh, DDoS uh, uh, mitigation solutions. All right, so um, with that, I'd like to uh, hand over the session back to Yal to continue and talk about our technology le leadership. Thank you, Yal. Okay, uh, thank you, Mir. Uh, so indeed, uh, what we've really talked up to this point 
uh, was first about why you need such a solution uh, in the sense of the challenges and the um, market shift in terms of the, the technology uh, that are facing customers today. So that was on the first part. And then in the second part, um, Nir introduced the actual solution itself, uh, how it works, and uh, its benefits uh, as a solution and as a deployment model. Uh, what I'm going to do over the next few slides, however, is to talk about specifically what Radware brings to the table and show uh, how uh, our uh, combination of technology, service, and network uh, really brings home uh, the, the best of both worlds uh, and offers the, uh, the uh, best of breed and market leadership um, type of solutions that uh, this type, these types of customers uh, expect. Uh, so just um, to uh, align everyone, uh, here at Radware, of course, we are uh, the market leaders at, at uh, DDoS protection or for DDoS protection. Uh, we've been recognized as such by uh, multiple analyst firms um, over a long span of years uh, in multiple reports. Uh, this latest report that you see um, on the screen in front of you uh, is from the IDC uh, Marketscape uh, for wor Worldwide DDoS Prevention Solutions from 2019. Uh, where Radware is, is uh, positioned in the pole position, effectively, um, on the top right uh, with the highest level of strategy and capabilities. Uh, and just to quote some of the uh, key quotes um, from the report, um, so, for example, according to customer feedback, uh, Radware is ridiculously always accurate and detection is very fast, um, as well as customers have stated that Radware will go out of its way uh, to make changes and improvements uh, to products based on uh, customer feedback. Uh, so again, this just goes to the point of both our leadership in technology, in both our detection and mitigation capabilities, as well as the emphasis that we put uh, on uh, service and uh, really being in a partnership with our customers. Um, of course, the uh, foundation of our offering uh, is our technology. Uh, and our technology based on uh, Radware's uh, Defense Pro uh, mitigation devices, um, which are based on uh, machine learning uh, technologies using behavioral algorithms, uh, which uh, use both rate variant and rate invariant uh, parameters uh, in order to identify attacks, classify them as uh, malicious traffic, uh, and separate legitimate traffic from uh, bad traffic that we want to stop. Uh, so whereas traditional defenses uh, will usually only be based on uh, rate limiting using a volumetric detection and will simply cut off uh, the traffic, whether or not it's good or bad, uh, Radware's behavioral technology uh, provides superior security with fewer false positives by really uh, looking at the traffic, uh, establishing baselines of user behavior, uh, and using that to distinguish between legitimate and uh, malicious traffic again, resulting in a lower rate of false positives. So that's on the detection side. On the mitigation side, uh, we also have automated algorithms that automatically uh, craft uh, signatures, defense signatures, based on the behavioral detection that uh, we mentioned in the previous slide. And using this, we can craft uh, defense uh, signatures that are tailored to the specific characteristics of each attack uh, and block it, again, with the lowest number of false positives uh, as possible. And this is done automatically uh, in real time uh, within up to 18 seconds. So attacks that we already know will be blocked instantaneously or almost instantaneously, but even attacks we don't know, which are zero-day attacks, uh, will be blocked uh, within a very short time, again, based on these automated uh, algorithms. Again, if you contrast that, to uh, traditional defenses, they're based on uh, manual signatures that require people to uh, analyze traffic, then build uh, custom uh, signatures based on it and deploy them, which can take anywhere between 30 minutes to hours or even more. Uh -huh. And the result is ultimately real-time protection and protection specifically against zero-day attacks uh, within a matter of seconds. So, the combination of our uh, detection and uh, mitigation capabilities provides the industry's widest range of uh, DDoS protection coverage, 
uh, including against uh, IoT uh, botnets and IoT botnet application layer attacks, uh, dynamic IP uh, DDoS attacks, uh, zero-day DDoS attacks, SSL uh, DDoS floods, uh, burst uh, DDoS attacks, and as well as attacks against uh, DNS infrastructure. Um, now, Radware, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, provides not only the technology itself, but also scales it out on, an, on a global uh, scale. Uh, and this is where our uh, cloud scrubbing service uh, comes into play. Uh, so currently, Radware has uh, 11 scrubbing centers uh, worldwide deployed in strategic uh, points around the world, uh, with a total of uh, currently uh, five terabits of global mitigation capacity uh, and constantly growing. Uh, so at this point in time, the largest uh, DDoS attack which has ever been absorbed, or rather observed, uh, is about 1.3 or 1.8 terabits, again, depending on who you ask and how you measure. But even if you take the higher figure of that, say about approximately 1.8 terabits, Radler has nearly three times that much of the largest attack ever observed. Uh, and we like to keep it that way. So this allows us both to service our customers, both our on-demand customers as well as our always-on customers, as well as leave more than enough capacity uh, to absorb you know, even the largest attack uh, that can come at us. Uh, and again, we're constantly you know, monitoring the, uh, the industry. We're seeing where the, it, the industry is at, and we're constantly growing our network uh, and our capacity. Uh, and add to that is our unmatched guarantee uh, to kind of future-proof our DDoS mitigation service um, and long-term mitigation capabilities because we own and operate both the network directly as well as own and operate the technology. So that allows us uh, the shortest loop between a technology and its implementation. So Radware customers are the first to uh, receive new protections as they are rolled out, uh, as well as uh, the ability to introduce updates and fixes uh, immediately as they are needed. Now, Radware's uh, cloud service uh, is, of course, a fully managed uh, security service. Uh, this is managed by our uh, emergency response team, or ERT, which is one of the industry's largest and most, and most experienced uh, security teams in this domain. Uh, so as part of the service, uh, Radware provides a security policy configuration and tuning. Uh, we provide a 24-7, 365 uh, monitoring, alerting, uh, and mitigation through our uh, SOC and NOC. Uh, we provide, of course, an online portal for immediate uh, reporting and management by the customer itself. And, of course, we provide for the service also periodic security consulting uh, to make sure that uh, the customer is, is uh, applying the best security practices and to really help the customer in partnership uh, to be as protected uh, as possible. And the aim, ultimately, is to help customers just take the burden off of their shoulders and outsource uh, security against DDoS protection to uh, the team of experts that really knows it best, and that's Radware's ERT. Um, now, on top of that, we also guarantee our uh, service commitments with the industry's uh, most extensive and most granular uh, service level agreement, or SLA, and this is where we really put our money where our mouth is. So Radware provides a six individual SLA guarantees with specific metrics and KPIs for time to detect, that is, how quickly we detect an attack. Uh, we are, in fact, the only vendor in the industry which provides a time to detect uh, SLA. Uh, time to alert, that is, uh, how quickly uh, stakeholders are alerted. After all, you want to be the first to know that there's something bad happening and you don't want your boss telling you. Uh, we also provide a time to divert uh, SLA uh, for on-demand, uh, for any on-demand uh, configurations. Uh, of course, we commit the time to mitigate. So that is one, how quickly we stop the attack once it has been identified. Uh, we commit to consistency of mitigation. That is how much bad traffic we actually uh, stop, which is real, a really important metric in terms of the quality of the mitigation. Uh, and finally, of course, we commit to a service availability of a 5.9, that is 99.999% uh, uptime availability. Radware also provides full visibility uh, across all assets and all 
uh, services uh, with a robust, entirely granular uh, reporting portal, uh, our Plus Security Portal, which provides both real-time monitoring uh, as well as management capabilities, including the ability for customer needs to actively initiate uh, their versions. Uh, we also offer uh, REST APIs uh, for SIM integration uh, in order really to help customers uh, integrate uh, the Rabbit protections into their full stack of capabilities. Um, so just to kind of cap off the, this discussion of uh, Radware's uh, capabilities and what Radware brings to the table in terms of uh, the hybrid always-on uh, protection, uh, let's just look briefly at a case study of a large uh, financial organization, which in this case is a large uh, European multinational banking and financial services provider uh, deployed in over uh, 40 countries. Uh, with tens of millions of customers. So as a large high-profile organization in the financial services industry, uh, naturally they were a frequent target uh, for DDoS attacks, uh, which their existing cloud defenses did not always uh, stop. So that was creating a challenge for them, which uh, they were looking to uh, mitigate. Uh, now this was especially important for them uh, since this is a an organization with a lot of very mission critical uh, services which must maintain constant availability at all times. Uh, so they approached Radware, which uh, offered this uh, solution for uh, hybrid always on protection uh, based on both uh, Defense Pro hardware appliances as well as Radware's always on cloud DDoS protection service. Uh, and once they uh, compared and also did a very extensive um, technical comparison of Radware against their existing vendors, against their incumbent vendor, um, they chose Radware over our market leadership, our single technology stack on both the hardware devices and uh, the cloud, uh, which provided full coverage protection against sophisticated attacks, as well as allowed them to keep their SSL uh, keys uh, in-house and mitigate any SSL attacks uh, on the, uh, uh, on, on the hardware uh, using the defense code device. Uh, in this case, this was really key for them because of the sensitivity of uh, the data that uh, they handled as a large-scale uh, bank. So let me just briefly uh, summarize uh, what we talked about uh, during the past half hour or so. Uh, so you know, the hybrid uh, always-on uh, service uh, using uh, Radware, um, provides a single vendor, uh, single technology, which provides for protection against both high-scale volumetric attacks, as well as more sophisticated um, attacks, such as application layer attacks or SSL attacks, SSL floods, which are mitigated by uh, the hardware device. Uh, Radware's approach also offers defenses, which are literally always on um, at all points. So all traffic goes through a mitigation device not only on the customer end, but also in the cloud. So again, at all times, we have two layers of uh, defenses. Uh, we provide through our reporting uh, and management of portal centralized control over both cloud and uh, on-prem or CPE customer premise equipment um, appliances. We provide for policy granularity, uh, which allows customers to uh, fine tune uh, both on-prem and uh, cloud-based uh, security policies uh, and really make sure that there's a uh, failover in case one of them uh, attacks somehow gets through uh, one of them. We provide a globally distributed and network with massive capacity of 11 scrubbing centers and five terabits of dedicated DDoS scrubbing capacity specifically for the mitigation of large-scale DDoS attacks. Uh, and finally, we provide the industry's uh, leading SLA uh, with six individual uh, metrics for measurement performance uh, based on our uh, emergency response team or uh, ERT. So um, as you uh, listen to um, you know, today's presentation, uh, and we hope you enjoyed it, uh, a few steps that we would like you to uh, consider about what to do next. Uh, so if you found uh, this uh, presentation interesting, uh, we would encourage you to do a few uh, key steps. So first of all, we encourage you to uh, map your needs. 
So, uh, as Nir mentioned, um, different customers have different needs uh, for DDoS protection. Uh, so, you know, think about what are your needs. Um, do you have mission critical applications that cannot afford any downtime? Uh, and if this is the case, then, you know, by all means, we encourage you to consider uh, the hybrid always on uh, model and really think about what is the best solution from your point of view. Um, based on, on, on that, you know, think about you know, what is the optimal deployment solution from your point of view. Uh, is it a full, just a cloud service or is it some type of hybrid uh, service either always on or uh, on demand? Uh, and finally, if you do indeed uh, think that a hybrid always on solution might be uh, relevant uh, for you and for your organization, uh, then by all means we encourage you to reach out to Radware either to your account manager or to your local uh, Radware sales representative uh, and talk to us. Uh, see how we can help you uh, and just have a discussion on you know, what would be the optimal solution uh, for you. Uh, so at this point we are uh, going to open it up for uh, a few questions. Uh, so, uh, again, if you are watching this presentation live, uh, there is a Q&A box uh, at the bottom of the URL screen. Uh, I see we already have a few questions that came in uh, during this presentation as we were uh, going along. Uh, so let's just uh, spend a few minutes uh, answering uh, a few questions. And uh, if we don't get to you, um, we will uh, reach out to you following this presentation. Uh, and if not, you know, feel free to email us your uh, uh, questions as well afterwards. Uh, so here we have a first question of um, what are the advantages of the always on hybrid model uh, versus the traditional hybrid model uh, which really is uh, on demand. Uh, so uh, traditionally as, you know, as, as this question points out, um, hybrid solutions uh, were effectively on demand. We have the hardware mitigation device that would handle day-to-day -day traffic and non-volumetric attacks. And if it detected a large enough attack, uh, then it would a signal to divert to the cloud and initiate a diversion to, uh, to the cloud scheduling service. Uh, the challenge here, however, is that this diversion uh, frequently comes with a certain time gap. And this is just the time that it takes for uh, routing tables, for BGP tables, uh, DNS uh, tables, if that is the case, uh, to uh, update globally. And this can take anywhere between uh, 5 and 15 minutes. And this is just a feature of you know, internet routing. It's really outside of the uh, security providers or the organization's um, capability. Uh, so the challenge with the traditional model is, is indeed this uh, diversion time gap. And this creates a challenge for organizations that cannot afford any downtime uh, whatsoever. And this is where the always on uh, element of this deployment model uh, comes into play. Uh, as the name replies, it is an always on uh, cloud, there's an always on cloud service that sits in front of the organization. Uh, so even if the, uh, so even if it detects a large scale volumetric attack, it will be mitigated directly, mitigated directly on the cloud. Um, and it will not require uh, any diversion at all. So, again, as Nir uh, talked about earlier, uh, the use case here is that this is best for applications and services which are uh, mission critical, um, and specifically for industry verticals uh, such as finance, uh, e-commerce, uh, software as a service, uh, and so on. So there are also a couple of questions here that uh, tend to uh, cost. So there's a question about uh, cost here. So Nir, maybe I'll refer that one to you. Yeah, it's a great question. So a um, couple of notes. First of all, uh, um, price depends on the throughput and the specific uh, device uh, characteristics. Uh, however, uh, at Radware, we offer dedicated hybrid pricing model which reduces price of service elements compared to a pure cloud service. So essentially this helps uh, reducing the overall price uh, for the end customer. And on top of that, our pricing is uh, competitively uh, priced and, uh, and aligned with, with the market. 
All right. Uh, thanks, uh, Nir. So here there's also another question about uh, SSL, which, again, Nir uh, talked about extensively. So why is this why is keeping the SSL key uh, on-prem uh, is such a, so important? Uh, so I'll, I'll take this one. So when you upload an SSL certificate to the cloud, uh, you need to understand that you're effectively handing a copy of uh, literally your encryption keys uh, to someone else. And you're effectively introducing a man in the, mi in the middle for any uh, communications that occur between you uh, and the, uh, the customer. Uh, now, some organizations are uh, bound by industry or uh, national regulations uh, that address um, either data residency or uh, secrecy of uh, SSL keys, uh, and therefore can't share such certificates uh, with a uh, third party. Uh, now, at, adding to that, SSL offloading in the cloud is frequently a complex and time-consuming matter, uh, which adds operational overhead, operational difficulty, difficulties, um, as well as introduces added latency, uh, and finally violates end-user uh, privacy. So keeping those keys in-house as this uh, DDoS protection model allows, um, allows for lower latency, um, data residency compliance, uh, ultimately better security, and also better manageability for organizations uh, as, they, uh, as they work with uh, uh, SSL keys. Uh, Nir? Yeah, so a couple of other questions that we see here. Um, when will this offering be available? So it is already available, and you can contact your local radar uh, representative or uh, partner. And uh, last question for today, um, will this work with my existing equipment, or do I need a new hardware? So absolutely, it will work. Uh, it will work with your existing hardware defense pro, uh, devices. We are utilizing the same uh, product line, the same technology in the cloud. So it works uh, in tandem in harmony. All right, back to you, Ayan. Okay, so uh, thank you, Mir. Uh, so first of all, I want to uh, thank everyone for uh, attending today's session. Uh, we're going to cut it off uh, here because I want to be respectful and cognizant of everyone's time. Uh, so again, uh, thank you so much for attending. We hope that you found uh, this content uh, useful and relevant to you. Uh, and that you enjoy this presentation. Uh, again, we encourage you to reach out to us with any questions that you have, uh, be it to your local Radware representative or partner, uh, the local Radware uh, uh, sales representative or account manager, or, or even to uh, us directly. Um, this uh, presentation will also be available um, online and on demand, so you can also view it uh, later uh, if you want to uh, repeat anything. Uh, so again, Thank you so much for uh, attending. Uh, we hope you have a great day. And again, feel free to reach, reach out to us if you have any questions. So thank you so much. Thank you, Nir. Uh, signing off here. Bye-bye.